The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. During the supper, Jesus said to the disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. We're still in the upper room on Holy Thursday, John chapter 15, and we hear a marvelous statement by Jesus the night before he goes to his death. He talks about how his father has loved him. He has kept his father's commandments and abides in that love. Now he's inviting the apostles and all of us to do the same, to keep the commandments and to abide in the love of Christ and through Christ, the love of the Father. This mutual abiding is a dominant theme, really, in the upper room. And it was as well for John when he was teaching about the Eucharist in John chapter 6, because he says about the Eucharist that there is this mutual abiding. If you eat my body and drink my blood, I will abide in you and you in me. This commandment to abide in God's love has consequences, and Jesus says it for us. Again, a remarkable statement. I have said these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Imagine the very joy that Christ experiences in his Trinitarian relationship. He wants us to experience now and in all eternity. So he gives us the formula of how to do that by keeping the commandments and abiding in that love and our joy would be complete. One just has to ponder that statement. Such a simple statement. Everyone's looking for joy. We experience temporary happiness in various ways. We have our, let's say, sensual appetites satiated for a time. There's temporary joy and joy in friendship with each other. But this joy that Jesus is talking about is on a whole different level. Given this revelation the night before Jesus dies, how is this going to be proclaimed? And we see it in the first reading from Acts chapter 15. What Peter does is he stands up in this first council of the church, council of Jerusalem, because there's a major question at heart here. Will the church be just limited to the Jews and those who come in from the Gentiles but keep the Jewish ceremonial precepts like circumcision, dietary laws, animal sacrifices, festival days, and so on? Peter wants none of that. As the first pope, he stands up and says, there should be no greater burden put on the Gentiles to come into the church and experience this joy, which is available in and through the church. So he wants the Gentiles to come in simply based on the grace that's available to not only the Jews, but the Gentiles, the grace of God. And that's why the institution of the Eucharist in the context of this great revelation is so crucial because as Jesus is making this statement, He's also then enacting a sacrament that will give us the grace to keep the commandments. So it's not just on us that if we somehow keep the law, keep the commandments, then we can enter into this mutual abiding and then this joy. Rather, it's this grace that's going to be poured through the sacrament of the Eucharist and the other sacraments, which inspire us to actually enter in. So that's why coming here tonight as you have on this beautiful evening, because we want that grace to keep the commandments, to abide in God's love, to enter into this perfect joy. That's why the Eucharist is so, so crucial.
And this is the message that needs to be proclaimed. So the psalmist in Psalm 96 says, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among the peoples. Well, that's our commission to do just that. With this knowledge, this revelation, again, given to us and the grace we're about to receive, let us enter into this joy and make it so manifest in our lives that even though we go through our own degrees of suffering, that joy shines forward as a witness to what Christ is inviting everyone into.